The value going into uh, into Monday session, no matter what happens, is definitely to the downside. Again, it's very, very tough to turn around and be bullish. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Uh, for all of us who live in the Northeast, cra crazy couple of days. We had 60 degree weather yesterday. It was beautiful, right? I was literally in a, a t-shirt and sweatpants yesterday. Uh, gorgeous weather. We wake up this morning, we got like two, three inches of snow. And as crazy as that sounds, it's actually tamed of what we saw uh, in the stock market this week. And the last video uh, I recorded was Wednesday, or Thursday nights. Uh, Thursday nights, I always take uh, the night off just to kind of reset my brain uh, for Friday. So there's never a video on uh, Thursday, or very rare, unless I uh, switch places, with, unless my kid has a game or something. Um, but the last time we, we spoke about, we were entering, um, we were entering the 200 day moving average um, the night before, okay, which was very, very important, which, which was super bullish. And we had this CPI number coming out the next day. And the, one, of the, one of the rarest things you can see or, or, or kind of come across is a major moving average being reclaimed twice, twice literally in two weeks. And the next day, the market loses that, that moving average, which is very, very odd. It's kind of like 60 degree weather in New Jersey and then snow the next day. But that's exactly what happened. And, and the craziest part of what we saw uh, Wednesday into Thursday's action, we actually gave the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Matter of fact, if you watched uh, the video on Wednesday, the title was, okay, bulls, don't F this up, right? Don't F this up. You, you reclaimed the 200 day moving average again. And what happened was we gapped down on a, you know, it looked like on the surface a pretty, pretty bad uh, CPI number. But to the bull's credit on Thursday, we started to rally. A lot of names went green on the day. Uh, Nvidia went green on the day. Tesla went green on the day. Uh, it was looking really, really good. And then slowly but surely, you started to hear and see geopolitical headlines, right? Russia, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine. And slowly but surely, that 200 day moving average that we reclaimed for the second time since the Google's earnings slowly but surely went from technical analysis good to technical analysis, well, what the hell is going on now? And slowly but surely, uh, we sold pretty aggressively into, into the close leading up to Friday session. And as overnight, we started hearing more murmurs. You're starting to see more images uh, on, uh, from CNN and other uh, news dissemination areas that slowly but surely that Russia was positioning on the, you know, all these different areas, whether it was on Crimea, uh, Crimea or Belarus or other parts of uh, the Ukraine. And now you're talking about the invasion is real. So there was a lot of moving parts and no, no matter what happens via technical analysis, the one thing that we can't control is, 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 uh, is headlines. And that's what took over really, really aggressively uh, come Friday. But the most important part, if you uh, recall from Friday's session was the market was selling off way before the headlines started to get intensified. And the one thing that we did know going into this week was that number one, we were sitting on this whole channel here for the whole week above, above the 362 that the bulls reclaimed the 200 day moving average. But the flip side, we also knew about the 352 area that you've been watching this broadcast, uh, especially in the first two, three days of the week. We know how important and they held that bottom channel was. So they broke and reclaimed the top and then Friday, with all these very aggressive headlines, they started going through the bottom channel here like a knife through butter. And it was very, very aggressive. And there was no bounce. And that was the most important part. Now, going into the weekend, you could turn around strictly from the technical view and say, well, wait a minute, how can you possibly feel comfortable being long over this weekend, right? You have number one, a technical deficiency uh, breakdown of the recent range, which is obviously bearish. And now you have a big matzo ball, right? You have a big headline hanging over you over the weekend of what potentially could happen in imminent invasion. Now, again, over the weekend, uh, we saw on Saturday night, apparently there was a, either a Zoom call, a telephone call with Biden and Putin. 
uh, you know, you know, trying to, to, to throw in some diplomacy. Apparently, there was some sort of discussion uh, between Putin and the premier of China. Hey, don't mess up our Olympics. You know, you know, if you could invade like a week after, a week and a half later, listen, we, we, we have to know who wins the downhill slalom. So, you know, don't mess around with our Olympics. So they, apparently they were like, all right, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. It's not imminent. So I don't know. Is this political banter? Is this, you know, is this kind of like measuring uh, their male, you know, parts? We don't know what's going on. But the point is right now it's Sunday morning. It's 920 in the morning. We really haven't had any fresh headlines. And based on what time you watch this video, you know, we could be completely in a, in a different area, you know, six to 10 hours from now. So if you look at at the, the, the core of where we are technically. Again, we, we can't control anything that's not technical. We can't control headlines, like I said before. We can't control uh, any outside factors. We could only control our research. That's the name of the game. And when you look at tonight's research, and if you've done your, your research ahead uh, of the Super Bowl, um, you'll see there's a lot of really good downside channels, right? I mean, and think about it. when you have when you're breaking down a macro range that held for a week straight and we finally close below it. As you can imagine, you're gonna have a lot of uh, weak looking charts. You have Tesla uh, that broke down, you know, broke a pretty big channel on Friday. You got Facebook looks like it wants to go back to its lows. You got PayPal, right? You got PayPal cracking this, you know, this recent little baby channel here. You got Google, and we'll get to the pivots in a second. We got Google literally. Thank God Google beat their earnings and had that 20 for one split. Where would the stock be at $400 a share? It hasn't had an uptick. It, it, it literally has not had an uptick, a meaningful uptick since its earnings. Uh, Amazon that had you know pretty good earnings and had that big rally uh, now lost its 10 day moving average. So it, it, it doesn't feel like you know the, the, the big segue of reclaiming anything um, was real. And, and again, it's very easy to say that 2020 is perfect vision. But when you when you look at how the stocks reacted prior to this news being disseminated and, and the, the flow was became very, very aggressive, you have to kind of say, well, you know, it's very, very tough to turn around and have a lot of faith in, in the bull thesis, uh, at least going into Monday session. Now, again, they could turn around uh, at any point. Remember this, you know, brought, I'm recording this at 930 in the morning. At any point, they could turn around over the weekend and say, ah, don't, don't worry, the, the invasion won't be imminent. Uh, there'll, there'll be some diplomacy. We could gap up, you know, 300, three, 400 points on Monday. But the point is you can't anticipate that. You can't assume that. Uh, and you have to just use the research. You have to use raw data to kind of, you know, give yourself a, a really fighting chance of what happens next. Now, is it possible they do come out and say, hey, there is not going to be an imminent, uh, imminent uh, invasion? I don't want to use the word attack. Imminent invasion? Absolutely. Right. And the futures could gap up 200, 300 points. But at the same time, based on what we saw on Friday's session, they could sell off very, very quickly. So the value going into uh, into Monday session, no matter what happens, is definitely to the downside. Again, it's very, very tough to turn around and be bullish. But you always have to, you know, keep in mind that again, a friend, a, a headline friendly uh, environment doesn't exist. And unfortunately, anything could come out at any given point. Um, again, we don't know what these leaders are thinking. We don't know uh, what the essence of anything that's going on. Uh, on the surface is, is real or not. So we have to do the best of our ability to kind of uh, trade against, uh, excuse me, trade with the tide uh, and not against it. Uh, you know, and the week turned out to be a pretty solid Friday. Uh, you had some early pivots working to the upside and then everything started breaking down. And the most important part uh, of, of what I, I say, especially to newer traders, and I've, I've always maintained this, you don't need to trade every single day. A, a lot of you guys have fully funded accounts um, you know, whatever X amount of dollars in your account is. But unfortunately, a lot of you guys, and to, you know, to no fault of your own, a lot of you guys are, are brand new to traders. You're young, you're just getting starting in life. That's great, that's fine, that's absolutely normal. And you don't have the luxury of having an X amount of dollars in your account. So I, I always maintain the fact that you don't need to trade every single day. You, you, you're, never, you're never gonna get that A plus setup on a daily basis that you could turn around and take advantage of. Breakouts and breakdowns don't happen on a daily basis, right? There's only one breakout and then everything else is continuation. There's only one breakdown and everything else is continuation. So if you're patient enough, and I think a lot of you guys have finally really figured that out, um, if you are patient enough and wait for those macro daily chart breakdowns, right? Those key levels that either stocks stopped 
at the top of supply and needed like a week, week and a half, maybe two weeks to get through it to the upside. You know, like, you know, names, for example, like a NVIDIA when it broke out on Friday, right? It broke out of this big macro channel that was holding up for two weeks. A name like Navi uh, AMD did exactly the same thing, right? Had this big earnings move and finally broke out of this daily channel. But on the flip side, it works the opposite as well. Stocks that made uh, recent lows on um, in the last few weeks, they tested those lows. And when those lows started breaking down and confirming macro, those are the A, a plus trades, right? That the Tesla pivot for three, four dollars in the middle of a channel, it's cool for cash flow. And again, if you have a big enough account, you could probably take advantage of that. But most traders need that measured potential move, that big uh, potential trade that you could take two, three, four days to play out, but the measured potential is real and it's standing in front of you. And I think a lot of you guys have seen now for the last several days, if you are patient, right, and you really believe in the theory that, hey, I don't need to trade every single day. The market's open, but it's not going to give me the value that I need according to my account size, according to my experience. Let me just wait, right? Because again, at the end of the day, your job in the first two, three years as a brand new trader, number one, try to accumulate as much funds as possible. But number two, you're trying to collect as much information, as much screen time as possible. So the, 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 the physical aspect of actually hitting a mouse, right? Clicking a mouse is a day-to-day -day activity that you want to do, but you don't need to do. You want to do, but you don't have to do. And the, the further you get into this business and you finally see how much screen time there is involved to really getting feel comfortable in your own skin, you're going to wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm okay. I'll wait, right? I don't need to short uh, this stock at this price. I'll wait for the big macro breakdown. And that was kind of the theme uh, going into Friday session. You had the negative he headlines. You had the fear factor potentially of, I don't even want to use the word war, but at least conflict, right? Again, nobody wants conflict. These are lives at stake. Uh, as much as you could be short of stock and the headlines are helping you subconsciously, unless you're a crazy evil human being, you're not wishing death on anybody. So your position uh, could work out. You got to be completely out of your mind. Uh, but the point is there is a two-sided market. People do trade both sides of the market. And the most important part is if you are, uh, if you do believe in technical analysis and you believe that you can you know, prosper on both sides of the market, and with this type of environment, especially with these negative headlines, he'll definitely make your trade and your short uh, very exaggerated on the way down. So going, you know, if you look at the technical view, you got the Qs uh, first close below uh, this 352 area. Again, if you believe in measured potential, um, you know, 338. And again, who the hell knows, again, what's going to happen in the next 10 hours? But, uh, you know, 338 is the next measure potential on the downside. Uh, you know, if the market continues to sell, uh, you got this lower Bollinger Band uh, going all the way down here. Uh, if you look at the semiconductors, for example, again, first close uh, below this linear regression line. You have room uh, all the way down to 253.70s. And the one thing that we, we've definitely figured out, uh, which group you know, it leads, the semiconductors lead on the way up. And the semiconductors lead on the way down. If you saw the selling, the aggressive selling in names on Friday, uh, you know, like an AMD, and this is after it took out earnings highs, uh, after NVIDIA, right? Look, look at the move down on NVIDIA after uh, breaking above its February 2nd highs. You know, these are really exaggerated moves back to the downside. And one candle here engulfed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days of buying. So pretty aggressive uh, statement made. Uh, by the by, the bears, the SPY again. The first close below this whole range here. If the spies confirm, uh, you have room all the way down to 429. So there's definitely a lot of value uh, to the downside going into Monday session. Depending where the futures are, I'd like to see how the opening ranges play out. But as we've seen. Uh, if you do your homework and you go through charts this weekend, there's a lot of charts uh, that are potentially breaking down uh, that you can uh, take advantage of. So let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Uh, very, very uh, aggressive way to end the day, to end the week. Uh, DDOG uh, was actually a pretty good spike at the open. Uh, 178 is a sneaky area. If it builds, can spike again. You know, the the morning the morning uh, you know set up pretty well. You had some you, you had some moves to the upside. You'll see in a second with DDOG uh, and Square. But everything else, once the ranges started breaking down, uh, it was pretty aggressive uh, to the downside. So here are the here are the pivots on Friday. Uh, DDOG 178 sneaky area. If it builds, can spike. Here's the 60 minute view. When I mean 60, when I mean sneaky area, it's on its 60 minute view. So here is the 178 area. Right here. Let me show you guys. 
this whole channel here. You see this top of the candle here? It was 177.50, 177.70. So once it took out this 178 sneaky pivot, traded right into supply here of 181 and a half. Good job for all you guys who took it. Then obviously everything got destroyed uh, after um, Tesla. Okay, and this is where this is where the day got really really good. Uh, Tesla 894 held twice. If it builds below, can see 887. It was a typo. It was actually 880. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the macro channel I'll put in later. This is it was actually 880. It doesn't matter. Everything broke down. But we'll get to that in a second. Google got destroyed. Uh, 2758. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Google. Right here was Google. Here got absolutely destroyed. So here was the 27. Uh, here's the 2757. Was the previous channel's low. It took it out, went all the way down to 2668. But you got a 100 point move on Google, huge move, guys. Uh, on Google, you, you had PayPal 118 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. Here was PayPal, right? Here was PayPal, took out the 118, this whole channel, closed pretty much at the lows at 115. Uh, that got smacked up a lot. Uh, VeriSign never confirmed. Square had a nice pop, got upgraded. I, di I didn't take any Square. I, I was, you know, I was kind of just waiting for the market to play out. Square had a nice pop at the open. They got upgraded. Uh, 113 needs to build. Here is uh, Square. Look at the 60-minute view on Square, right? Here's a 60-minute view on Square. So this whole channel here was 11280s, right? You see this whole supply? 11280s, it took out that 113, started building, went almost to 119, really, really big move on Square. Uh, and then here we go, all the way to the downside. ISRG never obviously confirmed. Uh, Square, take on the way up. DDOG, 181 on deck. Square, 117 on deck. You know, we're some pretty, pretty, pretty big moves off these channels. Um, so here's the, you know, here's where it started, right? Here was definitely uh, the trade of the day. I mean, just a phenomenal, phenomenal move. I mean, I love Tesla as much as I love a good uh, bull market and trading it both ways. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, 880 is massive, huge support held twice. And I said this again, especially for the option trades, you don't need to rush into a position. When you have a macro setup, you have a lot of room down. In this case, uh, you had, you know, you have room down to 825, 790. I mean, that's how much room you had. So you don't need to panic into this position. And Tesla, you know, took out the 880 and just got just destroyed. I mean, just absolutely destroyed. Here was the 880, the bottom channel here that it held twice uh, back on February the 3rd and February the 4th. It went through it, never looked back, went all the way down to 850. If this thing confirms, uh, if this thing confirms on Monday, you have room to 820. That's the next rising support. And then 792, uh, which is the January 28th low. So a phenomenal move, absolutely phenomenal move. Uh, Netflix, 393 daily support for builds below can flush. Here was uh, Netflix, all right? Here is Netflix. Not a huge move, but again, the stock is already down so much. But so here is the whole 393. It went down to like 787, bounced up, up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, a nice little move there as well. And let's see here, new lows. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tesla was, was great. Uh, take on the way down. PayPal getting hit. Yeah, I mean, beautiful moves. I mean, beautiful, beautiful moves. Um, you know, we were prepared for them. That's the key. I, I, I think, you know, I, I think the key is in, in this type of environment, which is, which is absolutely crazy. I, again, it's very, very rare. Um, it's very, very rare that you see back-to-back uh, -back attempts at the 200-day moving average get reclaimed and get stuffed. I think that's as obviously as rare as having 60 degree weather uh, one day and waking up with a couple of inches of snow. So we're in a crazy market, right? And this is kind of what we talk about. Uh, very aggressive uh, bull market uh, tendency spikes. But at the end of the day, the majority of price action, especially uh, for the last month, month and a half, has been below the 200 day moving average. And as much as you love, we love, I think all of us uh, love a good uh, spike and a good, uh, very aggressive obsession, uh, as the old, uh, as the old adage goes, it's um, you know staircase up, and the elevator down, and you know obviously headlines are going to make uh, a very very big uh, dent in uh, what's going on on the macro surface. So guys, have a wonderful, wonderful, safe uh, and enjoyable uh, Super Bowl. Um, I have no dog in the fight. I, I love the underdog story, as everybody, if you guys know, I'm a Jet fan. Yeah, I'm the one. I'm a Jet fan, dying dead inside Jet fan. So I, I'm rooting for the Bengals just because I know we're like a step away. Well, not really, 
where they are. I'm rooting for the Bengals. I'm rooting for Joey, right? I'm rooting for Joey, right? The whole, the whole group, but ah, Aaron Donald, you know, he kind of deserves a ring, man. You know, OBJ and all the rest of the guys. So it's going to be a good game. Um, my head, my heart says I like the Bengals. My heart, my head says I kind of like the Rams. I'm not a betting man anyway. I'm just going to enjoy the game, have some sushi, some Diet Coke, going crazy, let my hair down. Guys, have a great game. Enjoy the game. Enjoy your life. Be happy. Smile. And God bless. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow.